Due to their mechanical, chemical, and physical properties, polymers have many uses in industry. Today on How It's Gregged, we're going to look at the production of polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, and their constituent components. These chemicals are accessible as early as medium voltage, and can both be derived from ethanol. The production of polyethylene polymers begins with the fermentation of wheat. This produces ethanol, an important chemical, which is used in many processes. The fermentation step requires many machines. It requires two autoclaves, one macerator, and one mixer. The macerator should output flour, and split the output between the autoclave and the mixer. This enables efficient production of grain slurry. Ethanol is produced inside a fermentation vat. Fermentation typically takes around 145 seconds. Impure ethanol from the fermentation vat now needs to be sent to a distillation setup from which water is boiled off and ethanol is produced. Ethanol azeotrope is then sent to a CTSR, continuous stirred tank reactor, where hot sulfuric acid from a fluid heater reacts with the azeotrope. This in turn produces ethylene and I dilute sulfuric acid byproduct. The byproduct can be distilled and sent back to the fluid heater. This typically lends to a loss of around half of your sulfuric acid. However, sulfuric acid is a pretty abundant chemical and is very easy to automate. Being automatable as easy as ultra low voltage during the steam age, ethylene can be polymerized directly into polyethylene inside of a polymerization tank. This process can either use a catalyst or a programmable circuit. A very common, very well-known, real-world catalyst is the Zeglonata catalyst, which is, in fact, available. Polyvinyl chloride is a little more complicated, as it involves another continuous stirred tank reactor, which takes in the ethylene. Ethylene can be chlorinated directly, or oxychlorinated. Direct chlorination involves chlorine from a chlorine source, such as an electrolysis cell. Oxychlorination can use a hydrogen chloride byproduct from direct chlorination but also requires oxygen. This method is much better for people trying to decrease their chlorine loss. This yields polyvinyl monomer, and depending on which route you take, can yield a different byproduct. As stated before, direct chlorination yields hydrogen chloride, which could be reprocessed into hydrogen and chlorine, or used in the alternative method. Gaseous vinyl chloride monomer is mixed with water at an autoclave, to form a vinyl, vinyl chloride suspension. This can then be sent to the polymerization tank, where polymerization is initiated with potassium persulfate. The final step is to dry the polyvinyl chloride. The final product is polyvinyl chloride pulp, which can then be extracted and then solidified into many products. I would like to thank you all for watching today's episode of How It's Gregged, and I hope you all have a great Friday.